Welcome to this service for Sunday the 3rd of January. I should begin by wishing you all a happy new year. We certainly hope that 2021 will be a lot happier and a lot healthier than 2020. I've been asked to express thanks to the people of Howwood who donated Christmas gifts for the Preshul Trust. They were very generous and that is much appreciated. Now let us worship God. We open this service with hymn 322, Good Christians All Rejoice. Now let us pray. Eternal God, you have been our refuge from generation to generation, and you have surrounded us with blessings throughout our lives. We praise and adore you for your unchanging goodness. At the beginning of another year, we cast ourselves once again on your mercy for we acknowledge that we are your children and our times are in your hand. Therefore, we commit ourselves to your fatherly care and protection. O God, you know the secrets of our hearts. We humbly confess before you our many shortcomings, especially those by which we have grieved you in the year that is now past. We have not kept the vows we made at its beginning. We have yielded to temptation, and we have forgotten you. O oh God, we ask you now to forgive us. From this day forward, direct our lives that we may keep your commandments. Heavenly Father, we ask you graciously to lead us through the uncertainties of this new year of our earthly pilgrimage. Protect us from the dangers of the way. Prepare us for the duties and the trials that await us. And grant that each change the year brings with it may bring us nearer to you. We pray through Jesus Christ our Lord, in whose words we continue to pray, saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For the sake of the children, I've brought today a Christmas card. On the front, you can see the three magi, the three wise men, or as they're sometimes called, the three kings. And of course, there's the star that guided them. When you open up inside, it says, with best wishes for Christmas and the new year. But if you're able to see it, you will notice there's no signature. There's no name inside. And you may think this is simply a card that I've picked up that we didn't send to anyone. No, it's a card that we received and whoever sent it didn't sign it. And the result is that we don't know who it's from. I studied the envelope very carefully and tried to work out who had written it, but unfortunately I couldn't work it out as the person had used block capitals. They hadn't even written it in their own handwriting. So this card is what you would call anonymous. And that means it's a card without a name. We don't know who it's from. And what I want to suggest is that at the first Christmas, Jesus came anonymously into our world. Yes, people knew his name. They knew that he'd been called Jesus. But many didn't know that he was God's son. The baby lying in the manger looked like just an ordinary baby. Sometimes when there are paintings made of the scene in the stable, the baby in the manger has a halo round his head. But at the first Christmas, there was no halo round Jesus' head. He looked just like an ordinary baby. You wouldn't have known he was God's son. He came into our world anonymously. And still, Jesus comes to us anonymously. He rose from the dead at the first Easter and is with us evermore. He is invisible. We can't see him. But he is there nonetheless. He comes to us anonymously, and we simply have to trust that he is indeed with us. We now embark on the year 2021, and Jesus will be with us all the time. Occasionally we may be aware of his presence, most of the time we will not. Jesus is with us anonymously. This card was anonymous because we do not know who sent it. Jesus comes to us, and we may not realize he's there, but he will be there all the time, and we need to trust in him. Amen. Time now for another carol. We take one that's not in the current hymn book, but it was in CH3, number 186, Infant Holy, Infant Lowly.
Our Bible passage today comes from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 2, verses 13 to 23, and this passage will be read for us by Janet MacLeod, who is an elder at St. Paul's. When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said, take the child and his mother, and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night, and left for Egypt, where he stayed until the death of Herod. And so was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet, Out of Egypt I called my son. When Herod realised that he had been outwitted by the Magi, he was furious, and he gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity who were two years old and under, in accordance with the time he had learned from the Magi. Then what was said through the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. A voice is heard in Ramah, weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted, because they are no more. After Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who were trying to take the child's life are dead. So he got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning in Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. Having been warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee. And he went and lived in a town called Nazareth. So was fulfilled what was said through the prophets. He will be called a Nazarene. Amen. Let us pray once more. O God, You have commanded us to give thanks in all things. We praise you for all your goodness towards us, for the way by which you have led us and the gifts you have bestowed, for the joys you have given us in abundance and for the sorrows and trials which you have overruled for good, we give you thanks. For the measure of success you have granted to our labours, and for the guidance you have given in every path of duty, we thank you. And especially at this time of year, we are grateful for your best and greatest gift in Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Grant that we may express your praise by walking in his ways all the days of our life. Almighty God, we pray for your holy church throughout the world. Revive your work and grant to your people everywhere a new enthusiasm for you. May your church be alert in your service and quick to seize whatever opportunity the coming days may bring to witness for you and to work for your kingdom. We pray for the world in which we live and particularly for our own country. As the coronavirus still rages throughout the world, we pray for all who are involved in the health service, for all doctors and nurses struggling to help patients at a difficult time. We pray too for the scientists who roll out the vaccine and for those who gauge the level of care needed. We pray too for our politicians who have to make difficult decisions regarding the restrictions imposed upon us. Guide each and every one. Almighty God, the comfort of the sad and the strength of those who suffer Hear the prayers of your children who cry out of any kind of need, so that all may rejoice to know that you are indeed present with them in their affliction. Help the poor and those who have no other helper. Heal the sick, comfort those who mourn, and give such faith to all who suffer that through their affliction you may set forth your purposes of love. 
we pray through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God blessed forever. Amen. Our next carol is the hymn 326, As With Gladness, Men of Old. Matthew chapter 1 verse 24, when Joseph woke, woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him. Our Bible passage today is a part of the Christmas story that we don't really like. It involves the slaughter of the innocent children in Bethlehem, and that is something we would much prefer not to think about. But let's take the passage and look at the positive aspects of it. Joseph was commanded in a dream by the angel of the Lord, and he obeyed whatever commands were made. And you know, it happened four times. The first time the angel came to Joseph, he told him to take Mary as his wife, and Joseph did so. The next time, the angel came with a word of warning that King Herod was about to slaughter the baby Jesus if he could get hold of him. And so Joseph was instructed to flee to Egypt. He did exactly what the angel said, and that very night, while it was still dark, he got up, took Mary and the baby, and fled to Egypt. Later on, after King Herod died, the angel came with the instruction to return to Judea. Again, Joseph did what he was told and returned to Judea. But then Herod's son, King Archelaus, was reigning in his place. And Joseph was a bit afraid of him. So again, there was a dream in which Joseph was commanded to go from Judea north into the Galilee area to the town of Nazareth. And once more, Joseph obeyed. In this section, Matthew is portraying Joseph as the obedient disciple. This was long before Jesus began his ministry, long before he had called his disciples. But at this early stage, Matthew is portraying Joseph as the obedient disciple. 
And that is the image that we need to take with us as we embark upon this new year of 2021. We too need to be obedient disciples. But there's a little more involved. Joseph believed that God had a plan and a purpose. He trusted in that plan. And then his obedience kicked in as he obeyed God's purpose. And it's that combination we need for this new year. We need to trust that God has a plan for the world and for ourselves in particular. But we cannot leave it all to God. We play our part through obedience, through fulfilling the part that we can play in God's plan. The second thing we notice is that Joseph fled to Egypt. For him, that would be an unknown country. It was a fairly regular practice at that time, if people were fleeing from Judea, that they would go to Egypt. It was a place of refuge for them. You could imagine that with King Herod being as cruel as he was, many people suffered under his reign. And the place to which they would regularly escape was Egypt. But somehow I imagine this was Joseph's first trip to Egypt. I cannot see that he would have had any previous occasion to flee from King Herod. Nor did he need to go there in business. The trees that he used in his carpentry work would be local. And the customers that he served would be local. He wasn't going to Egypt to expand his business, nor did he go to Egypt for a holiday. Holidays would be unknown in those days. I once saw a picture drawn by a child to illustrate the flight to Egypt, and what the child drew was a plane with Mary, Joseph, and the baby Jesus on board. And I dare say that the pilot in the cockpit might well have been called Pontius. That's how a child sees it, because a child isn't aware of how very different life was 2,000 years ago before aeroplanes. The flight to Egypt was a lot simpler. But the point I'm really making is that while we could go on holiday to Egypt, that wasn't an option for Joseph. He was travelling into the unknown. And regularly in the Bible, God calls upon his people to travel into the unknown with nothing familiar, only their trust in him. And so as we embark on another new year, we too are traveling into the unknown. We don't like the prospect of something that is unknown. We much prefer the familiar, clinging to what we know. But there is actually a known as we go into the future, and that is the God in whom we trust. For he is described as the same yesterday, today, and forever. The God in whom we have trusted throughout the rest of our lives will be the same God that we need to trust in 2021. We don't know what this new year has in store. We guess that the opening months may be difficult as the COVID continues to rage. But we also know that there is great hope of the vaccine proving effective and that at some point, be it the spring, the summer, or even as late as the autumn, life will return to some kind of normality. Any year carries with it an unknown. As we embarked on 2020, we never imagined that COVID-19 would affect our lives to such a great extent. I think we'd heard of it at the turn of the year, but it was something that was happening in Asia, and we didn't imagine that it would have any impact on Europe. But it did. Any new year involves an element of the unknown. But what we need to do is to place our trust in the God who is known and obey his commands. One final thought. 
After King Herod had died and Joseph returned to Judea, we're not just sure where exactly he went. It may well be that he returned to Bethlehem because initially he did come to Judea. And it may be that he had actually settled in Bethlehem after Jesus' birth. For when the wise men or the Magi came to visit, we're not told about them entering the stable, we're told about them entering the house where the child was. Maybe Joseph had decided to settle there because he had relatives in Bethlehem. Maybe he decided to set up his carpentry business in Bethlehem rather than Nazareth. So when the time came for him to return, he thought he was returning to Bethlehem. But then through worries of King Archelaus, he was warned in a dream to go north, back to Galilee and back to Nazareth. It was a different future from what he had anticipated. We look forward to the time when life returns to normal. But we won't be picking up our lives where they were in March 2020. We will be picking them up at a different point, and life will have changed. In the church, life has changed. Think of how this service has been recorded. I think when services resume in the church, they will be live streamed so that some people who are at home will be able to view them just as they're going on in church. And then, of course, they'll be recorded and made available online later. And as for meetings, many of them take place now by Zoom. Of course, we will be able to have physical meetings in the future, but I imagine that Zoom meetings will at times still continue. Perhaps on a dark, cold winter's night, it would be nice to stay at home and yet still have the business done. So we cannot assume that life will be exactly as it was previously. The new normality will be different. But the important thing is that throughout it all, we place our trust in God. And like Joseph, obeying the commands of the angel of the Lord, we too must obey God. So my message on this first Sunday of a new year is to trust God and obey his commands. The simple words, trust and obey. Amen. Our concluding carol today is from the old hymn book, CH3, number 184, God Rest You Merry Gentlemen.
Now may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding and deserving, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with each one of you this day throughout 2021 and forevermore. Amen.